In today's news, Alexan Augusti charged with death by dangerous driving. BVI Health Services Authority Chairman addresses ambulance response concerns. VI Human Resources Department launches variety of new technology. Local businesses are said to be burdened by a number of holidays in the Virgin Islands, says former Labor Minister Vincent Wheatley. And Dominica proceeds with election despite a boycott. We have the details of this and so much more when 284 News returns. Choose your mix, choose your flavor. Good job there, brother. All right. I'm surprised you're here. I'm surprised you're still alive. Charles, it's been 60 years. I wish it was 60 more. Let it go. No. You know what you did. <laughs> it was just ice cream. But you know what? It was delicious. What? We're like a family get-together without all the family drama. What you gonna do? CG Insurance. Good like that. Welcome everybody. It's Wednesday, November 30th, 2022. I'm Ron Grant coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. Of course, a happy Wednesday is wished to one and all. Thank you so much for joining us. Beginning our newscast on the local scene, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force on Friday, November 25th, 2022, formally charged Alexson Augusti of Seacows Bay, that is, with causing death by a dangerous driving in the traffic fatality on Waterfront Drive that claimed the life of a woman in May of this year. The deceased Sophia Wilson, a native of Jamaica, was struck by the vehicle driven by Augusti while she walked east on the sidewalk near the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital. She was taken to the hospital and later transferred overseas for medical care, but later succumbed to her injuries. Augusti was granted bail in the sum of $25,000, with one surety to appear before the magistrate's court on February 23, 2022. The government of the Virgin Islands has announced a number of technological initiatives for 2023 that they say will seek to improve its tax collection measures, including upgrading its standard integrated government tax administration system and the establishment of an e-payment system. Our Kamal Haynes has this report. These were some of the many initiatives announced by Premier and Minister of Finance Dr. the Honorable Natalia Wheatley during his 2023 budget address on Tuesday. He said it is futile for the government to continue to implement new tax collection measures if the systems in place are not equipped to collect the intended taxes. To ensure his government and the respective ministries are effective and efficient in revenue collection, he said the Inland Revenue Department has embarked on a two-year project to upgrade their standard integrated government tax administration system to the latest software. The platform will be moved from version 1.0 to the latest version 3.0. This upgrade contains an integrated suite of modules that will automate the administration of taxes using a single comprehensive information system to facilitate greater transparency and modernization of the taxation process. SIGTAS 3.0 will allow for e-registration, e-filing, e-payments, and flexible reporting. By upgrading the software, central government will be able to optimize decision-making and increase the efficiency in tax collection, enforcement, and recovery. This will be rolled out early in 2023. The finance minister also revealed plans to introduce an e-payment system next year, which he believes will benefit the government in its collection of online revenue. Because another important development that will allow for easier payment of government fees is the establishment of a payment gateway to allow for e-payments. In order for government to reduce the risk and the responsibility of processing credit cards directly, it was determined that an online payment platform be established. With this approach, the government would benefit, would gain the benefit of collecting revenue online while limiting its involvement in banking activities. In conjunction with the Treasury Department, Madam Speaker, we are now at the advanced stages of discussions with Banco Popular and will be ready to launch this initiative early in 2023. 
Premier Wheatley also outlined some of the benefits to expect from the new online system. Other benefits of this initiative include a secure payment environment with a high level of fraud protection, the ability to make payments 24 hours a day, the ability to accept all forms of payment that are available locally, and a system that is simple and user-friendly. Madam Speaker, many agencies of government will be empowered to digitize their processes in the coming months, which should allow for a more efficient use of government resources. The Finance Minister revealed during his budget address that revenues for 2023 are projected to be in the range of $373.03 million, with $352.64 million coming from taxes. Reporting for Tweet 4 News, I am Kamal Haynes. Local businesses are heavily burdened by the vast number of public holidays presently issued in the territory of the Virgin Islands. This is according to representative for the 9th Electoral District, the Honorable Vincent Wheatley, who made the statement in a recent House of Assembly sitting. For the year 2022, the BVI will have a total of 16 public holidays, a number that Wheatley says will have an impact on both small and large companies. I saw a comment a few days ago, but I heard it before. And it's something again for us to think about. I don't, I don't have any answer for this one here. But I saw a lot of businesses are complaining about the number of holidays. That's what I want today because Monday's a holiday. And the person was saying, oh my God. And I think this is the 15th holiday for the year so far. Now, if you don't have a business, it might mean anything to you. If you have a small business, well, you'll be scratching your head. A bigger business, you're really scratching your head because you're paying a lot of money without getting any extra productivity or any extra income. And a lot of businesses are really starting to get irritated. Things are very challenging right now, and I think they're seeing this as an extra burden. The former Minister for Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration said businesses are still rebounding from the catastrophic hurricanes of 2017 and, of course, the recent COVID-19 pandemic. He believes that a system similar to the one used within the United States should be considered where businesses are not mandated to pay employers who do not work during the holidays. However, persons within the community have wondered why this was not instigated by the minister while he served as the labor minister. So it's something for us to consider what, what um, doing like in the states in the column bank holidays, where you don't work, you don't get paid. But if you work, you get paid, something like that. But I think the, the number of holidays we have now is appearing to be a burden on some businesses, having to have dealt with COVID, having to have done with the hurricanes, the floods, COVID, COI, all that stuff there, it's really affecting the businesses. The Department of Human Resources has launched a series of new technologies designed to enhance the delivery of services. The technologies launched are the first three of a number of technologies being developed and enhanced to improve efficiency and effectiveness in delivering human resource management services across the public service. The new and updated technologies include the Service Commission Tracker, the Talio software, and the Pension Calculator. The Service Commission Tracker is a platform designed to automate the process of moving matters efficiently through the Public Service Commission, Teaching Service Commission, Judicial and Legal Services Commission, and the Police Service Commission. The tracker will give internal stakeholders greater control of their matters and the ability to monitor them as they move through the processes. The Talio software is a talent acquisition software being introduced to automate and manage the job application process. With the full implementation of the system, successful applicants will be able to seamlessly transition from the recruitment phase to a non-sorry onboarding when employed. The platform will allow job applicants to create individual accounts where they can upload documents and save them for future use. The platform will also give applicants the needed access to monitor the status of their job applications. The new and improved pension calculator is a self-service application that will give public officers direct access to commute their own retirement estimate quickly and with great ease. The launch of the calculator includes a aspect to provide further guidance to officers. Now the relaunch of this application also features a new form which officers will use to request the confirmation of their years of service. Acting Director of Human Resources, Ms. Kaisa Penn, expressed excitement on behalf of the department for these new initiatives. She said in an official quote, We are excited about the introduction of these new technologies, which we 
are confident will enhance our service delivery. The investment of our time into the development of these systems has been a labor of love and our earnest desire to service our clients exceptionally. Our core goal, she continued, and every public officer and client is to bring HR closer to each of them. Public officers are encouraged to look out for a combination of HR uh, documents, of course, banners, and other uh, fillers, which will provide more details about each of the technologies and their platform uh, and what persons can expect. Viewers up next, uh, the BVI Health Services Authority Chairman addresses ambulance response concerns and Dominica proceeds with election despite boycott. These and more stories when 284 News returns. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fire network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. That's out. That's six. That's out. Worldwide medical coverage and affordable premiums. We're like a home match that isn't played at your actual home. CG Insurance. Good like that. My turn. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah, eh. Yeah, eh. How are you? Father Jesus. That line you long like church souls. Hmm. Customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come. Yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, protect me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Eh? Viewers, welcome back and thank you so much for sticking with us. You're watching 284 News out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands. Chairman of the BVI Health Services Authority, Mr. Molito Smith, has addressed concerns surrounding the ability of the territory's ambulances to provide emergency services to the public in a timely manner. Smith smoke, spoke sorry, at a recent press conference where he was questioned about an incident in March which left one person on accident site waiting for an extended period of time. Our Jaka Wooding has the report. We have all heard them. Horror stories from accident scenes. Families and onlookers waiting helplessly for the arrival of emergency response personnel while the situation on the scene possibly deteriorates. While some opt to transport their injured loved ones to the nearest health facility via their own personal vehicles, this is not recommended in some scenarios as the average individual usually lacks the necessary training to do so in a safe manner and threatens to cause further injury. And while some can afford to have their loved ones transported via privately sourced ambulances, others cannot and must rely on what is publicly available. That is why, when word spreads that an ambulance would have taken over 30 minutes to respond to an accident scene within walking distance of its point of dispatch, there is concern. On March 11, 2022, a review of emergency services unit call log at the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital revealed that after receiving a call for assistance, it took 36 minutes before the ambulance could be dispatched from the facility, after which it only took three minutes to drive to the accident, bringing the total response time of the ambulance to 39 minutes. While this was the timeline reported by the BVI Health Services Authority following the incident, BVI HSA Chairman Melito Smith has argued that contrary to what was told to the public, such a delay was not reflected in internal reports. There are public presentations in terms of what is said. 
and and the incident reports that we look at because because we with each incident as part of our quality review we look at all of the incident reports and the incident report doesn't or didn't um, speak to that extent of a delay despite this smith has conceded that there is room for improvement now can things be improved all, uh, as always things can be improved are we working toward improving them i'm confident that our staff is um, and that's part of what I believe is necessary in engaging our community in terms of what we do. According to Smith, some of the key issues faced by the public health system as it relates to delivering emergency care is availability and maintenance of the necessary equipment to support a 24-hour delivery of health services. The equipment and maintenance and replacement is part of our ongoing challenge to support uh, a 24-hour facility that has high utilization. Um, and this is across the board for not just with the fleet, but also with air conditionings, with um, capital projects, just with keeping a 24-hour giant that has many moving parts that um, we really have to drill down in a very strategic way to ensure that after um, after we look at things that we put a, a system and a, an institute, a structured process to keep afloat. But could the lack of an adequate number of ambulances in the BVI be contributing to this factor? Smith said that the simple answer is no. When contacted this week, the BVI HSA confirmed that a total of four ambulances were functional in the territory two in Tortola, one in Virgin Gorda, and one in Anigada. And while this may seem insufficient, it is well within World Health Organization standards, which recommend that there should be at least one ambulance per 100,000 residents in flat areas and one ambulance per 70,000 residents in hilly terrain or areas where the population is scattered. Smith does admit, however, that as it currently stands, the public health system of the BVI is not equipped for situations requiring multiple people to be transported. There's not a shortage of ambulances for a population, um, but no one can, no one can predict the future if there is a, uh, a mass type of event that requires multiple, multiple individuals at the same time to get transported for service. That's that's a one-off. So those are. Um, those are scenarios that are not routine. For 284 News, I am Jaka Wooding. Local gold medal cyclist Philip Leroy received a hero's welcome when he returned to the territory over the weekend after winning the men's D1 category at the 2022 Pan American Masters Cycling Championship in Colombia earlier this month. Our Kamal Haynes has the exciting story. Veteran local cyclist Philippe Leroy wrote his name in history pages after becoming the first competitor from the British Virgin Islands to win the Pan American Masters Cycling Championships Men's D1 category event, which fuels competitors between the ages of 60 to 64. He was welcomed home in celebratory fashion with a motorcade at departed Port Purcell roundabout at around 3 p.m. on Saturday, November 26 and made its way to the No Lloyd Positive Action Movement Park. Here, he received an official recognition ceremony for his gold medal performance, an event that was attended by members of the BVI Cycling Federation, the president of the BVI Olympic Association, Mr. Ephraim Penn, and other cycling colleagues. In an exclusive interview following the ceremony, I spoke to Mr. Leroy, who recapped the race and the moment he realized he won the category. I went there not hoping to do that well. I thought, let's go and try to do something good for the BVI and compete. And I'm fairly fit for my age, so I thought I could do well. And when the race started, I just couldn't believe it. I was feeling good. Uh, three cyclists had left before me in one minute interval. And I was catching them up and passing them, and I couldn't believe it. I wasn't sure I was going to win at the end, uh, but somehow they heard my name. And I went to ask and say, Yes, yes, you won. I'm like, oh, that's incredible. And everybody had a nice time trial bike. I did it with my regular bike. So I was very surprised and it was great for the BVI to win the gold. Yeah. And also speak about the trap that you would have ridden and the atmosphere and the environment, obviously, and some of the difficulties you would have faced in that uh, process and in that journey of winning that gold medal. 
Uh, down there, there wasn't uh, a time trial is fairly easy, so there's no too much pressure because it's one on one, and you just do the best that you can without going too hard. Uh, the atmosphere down there was very good. Everybody was super friendly. It was very well organized. A lot of competition. The road race the next day that was very different. Then there was a big team from Colombian on the race I did. There were about 35 of them. And because I won the previous day and bright yellow and green jersey, they had dark blue jersey. As soon as I attack or something, they were going go, 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 go. So I couldn't hide from anybody. It was so hard. So I finished at the front with everybody, but I couldn't finish in top five. Leroy also relived the emotions that filled his body after finally coming to grips with what he had achieved. Just after the race, I just couldn't believe it. I felt incredible. Everybody was celebrating. I didn't really get it in the beginning, the first like 10, 15 minutes, but afterward, I felt overjoyed. I couldn't believe I won the gold for the BVI. It was incredible. The sensation was great. And obviously, you were here now. There would have been a ceremony held on your behalf. Speak about how it feels to be celebrated, you know, to be driven around the territory and celebrated for your achievement. And how does it feel to be back home? It felt great to be back home. I mean, everybody's been cheering me up and saying congratulations. And this celebration here today was incredible, really. I didn't expect that, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at speaking, but I just out of word for this. Uh, I didn't expect any of this. So many people showed up. Uh, it was great. Also commenting on Leroy's performance was Vice President of the BVI Cycling Federation, Mr. Mark Stevenson, who said that Leroy's competitors did not see that performance coming. I, I think, as you say, it's, uh, it, it is an incredible achievement for our little nation to uh, be up on the world stage and uh, to, to perform and achieve at that level. Um, I think Philippe, uh, uh, as I was saying in the ceremony earlier, I, with, with all of these cyclists from all over the Americas coming to this event, um, with some 35 from Colombia alone and all the other nations having dozens of other cyclists on their teams, we had one. And, you know, he was there by himself. Um, for the time trial, it's a level playing field because they're, they're all cycling individually. And that's where he was able to excel. And that's where he showed them his strength. And they didn't see it coming. They didn't, they didn't think that there, there was someone from this little nation that could do this. Um, and unfortunately, I think they, they uh, took that as resolve to, to make sure that they would, they would sort of defeat him over the next couple of days. And, uh, and that's easy to do when you have a big team against one person. So, uh, nonetheless, an, an incredible achievement on his part for the um, for the time trial. And uh, um, I think uh, people know where the BVI is now. Mr. Stevenson also spoke to what such an accomplishment means for the future of cycling in the BVI. I think what this does is it shines a spotlight on cycling and, and it's a spotlight we haven't had on cycling for a very long time. We've been working at this for years and years. The Cycling Federation's over 30 years old and uh, over the years we've been building it up but um, what we really need to do is get a lot more youth involved and that's our mandate is to really try and target youth that, that want to get into cycling and just support them, find, find ways to get them into uh, a program of training and the nutrition and all that that goes with it, get them the equipment they need and, and get them involved and hopefully uh, with, with something like this when they can see someone from the BVI going and, and actually achieving something great, uh, hopefully that's motivation and inspiration for them to, to uh, get into the sport. Philippe Leroy, a name that should be forever remembered in the BVI for his contributions to cycling and raising the BVI's flag on the international stage. Reporting for Twit4 News, I am Kamal Haynes. Up next, we pan across to Dominica as their elections take a very special and interesting turn. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Yes. Hello? Wait, you're not I care. You say you were sick? What happened to all the rehearsal? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pier Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. 
These and more stories when Two Eight Four News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take two Advil, and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, I see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Viewers, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Dominica's December 6 election is gearing up to be quite interesting as the incumbent Dominica Labour Party contests on challenge in several constituencies due to the decision of opposition parties to boycott the election. More on this report. Despite the decision of two main opposition parties to boycott the 2022 general election in Dominica, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt is still urging Dominicans to come out and exercise their democratic right on December 6. The trend began earlier this month with news that the Dominica United Workers' Party had decided not to contest the SNAP election, stating that it is convinced that electoral reform needs to take place before any election is held, quote, as demanded by the Dominican population, is needed to facilitate free and fair elections, end quote. The United Workers' Party has been Dominica's most successful opposition party in recent years and currently holds three seats in the House of Assembly. The remaining 18 are that of the incumbent Dominica Labour Party. The UWP had been demanding electoral reform even before the previous general election, but remains unsatisfied with the progress in that regard. While some would anticipate that the removal of the UWP from the ballot would be welcome news by other political parties, who could possibly benefit from the votes of their supporters, the Dominica Freedom Party has announced that it refuses to contest the upcoming election as a political opportunist. DFP leader Bernard Hartolt was recently quoted as stating, quote, The Dominica Freedom Party was founded on principles, human rights, and integrity of action. While the decision of other parties to not participate in the elections may seem to present the right opportunity for the DFP to be political poachers, it is simply not in the DNA of the party to ignore its principles. End quote. The DFP too has announced that it will boycott the December 6 election. In recent years, the DFP has not had much political success, despite holding office between 1980 and 1995 under the leadership of Dame Eugenia Charles. The party quickly disappeared from the House of Assembly over the next decade and has not held any seats since 2005. Despite the decisions of the other political leaders at this time, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt of the Dominica Labour Party is urging Dominicans to come out and participate in this election. Skerritt spoke at a recent public meeting where he addressed news that the boycotting parties and other opposition parties were urging people to refrain from voting. We want to ensure that we get a resounding victory on December 6. As I have said, as I have said on many occasions, on many occasions, not voting cannot be an option in this election. Voting is a choice each of us must make, but we always have to make the right choice. We cannot sit back and say that labor has won and I'm not voting. It is absolutely important that every vote is counted in this constituency. Skerritt, who has been Prime Minister of Dominica since 2004, is one of six DLP candidates who has been nominated uncontested for the upcoming elections. For 284 News, I am Jacques Wooding. We will, of course, continue to keep you posted on the regional matter. As viewers, that's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for your daily news updates at 284media.com. And, of course, like us on Facebook at 284media and 284bvi on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Ron Grant. I will see you again tomorrow. Happy Wednesday. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Bye-bye. Affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top-Up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top-up or what?